a long day. I hope some of you are still awake. Uh, the topic, what was told, actually we ended up changing it at the last minute to make it more relevant for uh, this crowd. What we'll talk about today is the role of synthetic data in, in enabling AI projects at G GCC. My name is Mridul Mishra, and uh, I work for a company called Fidelity Investment. What I'll do is quickly introduce you to Fidelity. Uh, we are as old as independent India. We were created somewhere in 1946, so around 76, 77 years. This is the first mainframe which we bought in 1965, so almost 60 years. We have been investing in technology and anything which is the where technology investment is required, like AI, quantum, we have been doing it. The second picture there is uh, one of our first fund which had a billion dollar AUMs in 1983, which is what, 40 years back. Now we are, uh, we manage around $4 trillion of money, which if we were a country, we will be the fourth largest in terms of GDP, just behind US, China, and Japan. It's a fairly large financial services company. The third picture here is uh, one of our products being launched at NYSE, and I wanted to say that because we are a private company. Uh, that was just our product being sold. What a private company allows us to do is we can invest into technology a lot longer without worrying about quarter on quarter performance. So in summary, we are a large financial services private company, and what I will talk to you is in that context. So typically, the kind of questions which we keep hearing is that the data which we deal is confidential. Uh, first of all, financial services, second being 10,000 miles away. This kind of question comes a lot, even internally, sharing between business units. But if you try to share it with vendors, partners, academia for research, that is one of the key problem which stops innovation. The other thing as part of uh, doing a lot of AI projects which comes is, that we need data. And if you have data, they say we need more data. And if we have more data, then it's like we need more diverse data. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples where we keep getting a lot of these. Like, if you are looking at autonomous cars, you need diverse data set, like maybe uh, a deer on an icy road. There isn't a lot of pictures of deer on an icy road for you to train your data with. I have never tried it, but I believe it will be very difficult to get that kind of data. In our environment, like investment management, we need to do a lot of back testing, and for that we need data. Now to get the data where, like current scenario, where interest rates are high, inflation is high, unemployment numbers are low, uh, the, the economy is doing quite decently well, there is fairly sizable derivative market, actually it never happened in the past. Now that data doesn't exist itself. And if you want to backtest a certain investment strategy, it's just not possible. That's the second problem. And third problem did get mentioned a couple of times today. A lot of data which we get is biased, are skewed. And in a lot of ways, when I say bias, the regular things about gender, uh, race get discussed. But the skew creates a lot of problem, like some of the use cases like fraud detection. I mean, hardly one in 10,000 cases are fraud. So if you want to use that, to train a model, it's very difficult and very difficult to do. So what's the solution which we figured it out, uh, which is using synthetic data? And what is synthetic data? Synthetic data is, uh, it's like, um, uh, like lab-grown diamonds. I mean, you can go diamond, mine it, extract it, it will be very painful, it will be very costly, versus, uh, most of you know, you can actually make a diamond in the lab. And it's very difficult to differentiate in the quality of a lab-grown diamond versus uh, extracted diamond. So the way we look at it is the computers itself can generate the data for you. And then you can use it for a lot of problems which we talked about in the earlier use case. Uh, Gartner has been saying that uh, so far the usage of uh, synthetic data has been fairly limited. But as you look at next four, five, six years, more than 60% of the data on which the model will get trained will be synthetically generated. So this is not data which is collected. This is not the data which we have got it from the field or clickstream data. This is the data which has been generated. And what I will talk to you is some of the approaches which we have seen from here on. Honestly, this is not a new concept. I mean, you can actually go to the Excel and say generate data, it will generate it. Uh, for a lot of us who used to work in uh, quantitative finance, statistical methods like Coppola used to be generating data, if you have used it in the past. The problem really which used to be there was 
they don't look at the relation between variables. So if you have an age column and you have a salary column and you have the investment column, they are somewhere related. But they will generate age separately, income separately. Now what has started happening is that a lot of newer systems which are coming out, whether it's autoencoder-based, stable diffusion, and the, the one which I will talk about more, the GAN-based, is allowing us to do a lot more better. I missed the LLM here intentionally because that get discussed a lot anyhow. Uh, this is the only technical slide I had. I like the GAN architecture for a couple of reasons. One of it is the story, the guy who built it, Ian Goodfellow, said that the, uh, he was having a drink with the, his buddies in a pub, and he drew this architecture on a napkin, and his friend said it doesn't make sense. He went back home, built it up, he saw it working. Next day morning when he showed it to his friends, the question was like, what, what were you thinking? He was, the only thing which was there was, because I was drunk, I went ahead and believed that this can work. It, it, I'm not suggesting that you should drink for innovation. No, no health warning. Uh, the way it works is there are two, uh, two neural networks here, and in a way, one of them is challenging the other to figure out whether certain input which is coming out of it is true or false. Uh, it's kind of a fairly unique architecture, what makes it that unique is there is actually a noise component. Now what noise allows you to do is actually create data which doesn't exist. Most of the other synthetic data systems look at the existing distribution of data and try to create it in, uh, in a new format. You may get more data. But what noise allows you to do is create newer and newer forms of it. And because there are two networks competing with each other to create it, it allows some really good things coming out. Uh, Google uses a lot of it, OpenAI, Meta. So a lot of image-related things which you would have seen somewhere are using GAN. We have seen a lot of it even coming out for like regular enterprise applications on the synthetic data side of it. I know we have a minute. So here is my next steps part of it, which is, uh, for your use case, I will strongly suggest if you haven't explored that side of it, please look at it. It can solve some of the real problem, whether it is about data sharing, training uh, the model when the data doesn't exist, like cold start type of problem. The good part is there is a lot of innovation happening in the startup space along with open source. So what you will be able to find is if you look at uh, the startup space, there are at least 10, 15 uh, US-based bunch of Israeli startups who are working in this space, which will be able to help. There's a lot of work happening in the open source, so you don't have to really do a lot of work homegrown. Because this is data, it does require working with a lot of different people, whether it is your information security, legal, and IT team. So just keep them along, but it gives a very unique tool set for us to solve the problems which are earlier not solvable. That was my take, and I'm at time, so thank you.